Alright, so we are virtually at the end of the game now. There is nothing left to do except take on the final boss, the Super Tyrant. And actually, you know what? He is not the final boss. We actually have to fight William Birkin again for a third time, okay? But he is incredibly easy in his third form, so it's not even worth mentioning. We basically take him on after we've defeated the Super Tyrant. And you can defeat him playing blindfolded, okay? It's a fucking cakewalk. But the Super Tyrant is a motherfucking ass to defeat, okay? Like I said in the previous video, he is extremely aggressive and he is extremely fast. He is totally unrelenting, unforgiving. He is just a fucking son of a bitch, okay? He is way harder than the Tyrant from Resident Evil 1, okay? So if you remember in Resident Evil 1, the final boss was taking care of the Tyrant. Both this fight and that fight play in exactly the same manner, okay? The only difference is the Super Tyrant, like I said, is way harder, okay? So I'll talk about why in a minute. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Mom! Sherry, you have to escape. I know I've been a terrible mother. But I still love you. Forgive me. <gasps> Mom! Sherry, we have to go now. Alright, so we need to get Sherry and take her down with us. And we'll just collect this master key off Annette which basically allows us to take an emergency elevator down to the train all right, and escape this area. But as I was just saying before we had that cutscene there, I was explaining the difference between this Super Tyrant fight here and the End Tyrant fight from Resident Evil 1. Both of the fights play in exactly the same manner, okay? So what do I mean when I say that? All right, well at the end of Resident Evil 1, if you remember, we fought the Tyrant on top of the helipad, okay? And we didn't even need to shoot him once. All we had to do was run around in circles, okay, avoiding his attacks. And once the timer hit 30 seconds, Brad, the helicopter pilot, would throw a rocket launcher down. We'd pick it up, shoot the tyrant, and that would be it, okay? It's exactly the same for the super tyrant fight here, except instead of being on a helipad and Brad the helicopter pilot throwing the rocket launcher down. It's actually Ada Wong standing on top of a walk bridge, okay, and she will throw us the rocket launcher down. And instead of that happening at around the 30 second mark, I believe it's around the 3 minute mark, I'm not sure, alright. You wait here. I'll go and get this thing moving. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure exactly at what time Ada will throw the rocket launcher down for us. It may be the 3 minute mark, it may be 3 minutes 30, it may even be less than that, 2 minutes, 1 minute, I have no idea. I don't think it can be 1 minute or less because we need to run around and do some other shit after we have taken care of that super tyrant. So there is some more things to do, alright? So we actually need a bit of time to do that and one minute or less would be completely unfeasible. Just picked up the platform key there. Yeah, so look, I'm actually not gonna take care of the tyrant by doing that, okay? I'm not gonna run around in circles waiting for Ada to throw the rocket launcher at me. I'm gonna speed things up by shooting at him with the grenade launcher, okay? And as you can see, I've got a fuckload of herbs. For good reason, okay? The fight can turn to bullshit very quickly. So I'm just taking everything I've got basically, alright? So I'm going to shoot at the Super Tyrant with the grenade launcher. And once you cause enough damage on him, that will actually trigger Ada to throw down the rocket launcher, okay? So none of this bullshit of running around in circles waiting for the timer to hit a specified time before she throws it, okay? You can speed up the process by actually shooting at the Super Tyrant. Alright, and like I said, that's going to make Ada throw down the rocket launcher quicker, so we can end the fight sooner. And as you can see, we've got five minutes, alright? So we're going to go ahead right now and run straight to the Super Tyrant, 
take care of this fucker. So you're probably wondering something at this point as well. If the Super Tyrant fight here plays out in exactly the same manner as the End Tyrant fight from Resident Evil 1, why is this fight harder? Good question, now let me explain. In Resident Evil 1 we fought the Tyrant on top of the helipad. It was an open space, we had plenty of room to run around, okay? Here you do not have room, we are taking care of him in a very restricted and confined space, so there is hardly any room to manoeuvre. Not only that, but also if you remember from the Tyrant fight in Resident Evil 1, when you ran away from him and gained a bit of distance, he would charge at you and do a slash, okay? Same shit happens here, except the distance is way shorter, okay? So really, you can't be too close to him, nor too far. It's total fucking bullshit, I'll show you what I mean. Here he is. Alright, so here he is. He's just slashed me already. Fuck, he's slashing me a bit more. Alright, I'm gonna run over here, turn around, and just shoot him, okay? I'm not even gonna move. I'm just gonna stand here and keep shooting until Ada throws the rocket launcher down, right? This is the best way to do it, trust me. So there we go, that's triggered Ada to throw the rocket launcher down. So now we need to try and pick it up, which is quite difficult, okay? Because if he slashes you like so while you're trying to get it, that will stop you from picking it up, okay? It's fucking annoying. So the trick here is to walk like this. Do not get too far, otherwise that will happen, okay? Just fuck me up. Ooh, quickly grabbed it there, that was lucky. Alright, so just heal in case of bullshit. Equip it, and I'm gonna run, turn, and shoot, and that will be the end of him. You lose, big guy. So that's basically it, okay? I mean, I probably made it look really easy and short there, but that's because the way I was taking care of him is the best way to defeat him, okay? I stood completely still, all I did was aim the grenade launcher at him and shoot. Obviously I was taking damage, you know, he kept slashing me because I wasn't moving. So you guys are probably thinking, well, you know, you were taking damage, you were taking hits, it didn't look like you were doing too well in that fight. Trust me, that is the best way to take care of him, okay? Stand totally still, let him hit you, he's gonna hit you, okay? Just fire off the grenade launcher at him until it triggers Ada to throw down the rocket launcher, and once she does, pick it up and shoot him, okay? That is it. If you try and run away from him, it's gonna trigger him to do that charging slash move, which is really fucking annoying, okay? And you can actually be stunned by that. So if you remember in the second Birkin fight, I was raging about how if you get stunned, alright, and you're on danger health, you can't move, it's fucking bullshit, you're as good as dead. The same thing can happen for this fight, okay? So be very, very careful. I would say, if you are on yellow caution, okay, so while you're getting hit, as you're firing away at him with a grenade launcher, check your health, okay? If you are on yellow caution, use a full healing item, okay? This is no time for bullshit. You do not want to get stunned at this point, okay? Because we are so close to finishing the game now, it's not funny. And if you were to die right now, especially if you're going on a no save run or something like that to try and unlock the unlimited Gatling gun, you are going to go fucking mental, okay? That is just going to be total fucking bullshit. So play it safe and carry all the herbs like I did, okay? Pretty much every herb you have left in your inventory, take with you.
my brother. You're right. This is just the beginning. Ah, my god has protected you. It will always be with you. Claire... Sherry... What was that? Alright, so what's going on? Let's go out here and investigate the area. Warning, biohazardous outbreak imminent. The emergency system has been activated. This train will detonate. Repeat, this train will detonate. No! What's wrong with this thing? I don't know. The door won't open. Okay, so the game is not yet over. We still have one more thing to do. And can you guess what that is? Taking care of William Birkin again, okay? This is the third time we have faced this guy. I'm sick of seeing him. Why won't he just die? Why can't Resident Evil games just let characters die? Why? Look at Wesker. How many games has he been in? And how many times has he died? Enough is enough. Let it go. But they couldn't, no. In Resident Evil 6, you know, they were like, okay, we won't put Wesker in the game. We'll just make you play as his son instead. What an insult. Like a punch in the balls, as if to remind you what it feels like. Fucking bullshit. Anyway, let's go ahead and take care of Birkin for the third and final time. He may look intimidating, but this is incredibly easy, okay? I actually try and kill him with the rocket launcher. You know, you think one shot, if it can kill the super tyrant, should kill him. But as you can see, nothing happened. Alright, so I just run to the back here. And I'm going to equip the flame rounds, okay? They work pretty good. And I think he only takes about seven or so shots, okay? It's extremely easy. You will never take damage. He's just way too slow. So that's it.
That was a close one. That was pretty impressive back there, Sherry. It was nothing. I saw someone do that on TV once. Come on. We've got to move out. Now what's the problem? Is something following us? Hey, we still have a job to do. Let's go. Go? Oh, you can't mean... Chris, I have to find you. All right, so there we go, guys. That is the end of Claire's B scenario. The B scenarios are way harder than the A scenarios, okay, because of the boss fights. You know, you've got William Birkin in his second form, which is a bitch to take care of here in the B scenario as opposed to the A scenario. He's just way more aggressive here, okay? It's fucking bullshit. And not only that, we had to take care of the Super Tyrant, which is also a pretty difficult fight if you don't know what you're doing, okay? If it's your first time playing, you're going to get totally fucked up on that fight, okay? You won't know how to do it. You won't know at what point the rocket launcher will be thrown. It'll be a total fucking mess, okay? But hopefully I've offered you guys some good tips, strategies, advice, and you've had a bit of a laugh along the way. That's all it's really about anyway. And I actually unlocked the unlimited submachine gun here. That is unlocked by completing the game in under three hours with an A or B rank. Okay, on the B scenario, I could have actually gone one step further and unlocked the unlimited Gatling gun as well. To get that, it's basically the same criteria as the unlimited submachine gun, but you cannot make any saves, okay? So if I didn't make any saves here, I actually would have got that as well, so that's pretty cool. And not only that, I also unlocked the hunk scenario. So that's pretty cool, you know, he's the fourth survivor, so to speak, and gets his own little campaign, so that should be fun. Basically, to unlock the hunk scenario, you need to get an A rank on a B scenario game with either Claire or Leon, okay? So that's how you get that. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you've had fun. I'll let the remaining credits play, and you can see my final rank. As usual, I get an A rank. That's it. I'm out.